Hi everyone, I hope you're good. This is Sharik and welcome back to another Lebanese Arabic lesson. I was just live on TikTok so I decided to come on Instagram and give the same lesson and most probably we will come up with some new ideas and some new thoughts. So when I say this is a Lebanese Arabic lesson, as always, it classifies as Levantine Arabic because Levantine Arabic is spoken in Lebanon, Jordan, Palestine and Syria and the Lebanese dialect falls under the same umbrella. So when I teach Lebanese Arabic, hi Eva, when I teach Lebanese Arabic, uh, it would be uh, understood, especially in this region, but also it's a very commonly understood Mm, dialect because uh, it's a widely spoken one especially in the recent years because of talk shows uh, and uh, Lebanese singers who became very famous in the Arab world so they kind of also spread um, the Levantine dialect and also there were lots of Turkish movies translated into the Syrian uh, dialect and that kind of helped spread uh, Levantine Arabic slash Levantine Arabic. So I'm gonna give you a few expressions that are fun to use. If you were on my TikTok, it can be a revision for you because I did the same on TikTok. But if not, yalla, you can stay here and we can learn together, okay? By the time a few more people learn, hi everyone, hi, 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 hi. By the time a few people join, I want to let you know that I'm doing a live course on Zoom. We already began September 5 and we finished December 4, but it might not be too late for you to join if you're interested in joining. So you can leave a, you can leave a message on my Instagram and uh, we can talk about it if you're interested in joining. We are meeting every Monday and Wednesday for 1 hour and 15 minutes and there are study sessions on Saturdays. It's really fun. I love it. And uh, yeah, if you're serious and really keen about learning Arabic, this is your chance because it's a very, very structured course. And I also have the same courses in pre-recorded, which means you can do them on your own. Yalla, let's begin. So today's first expression is, I'm going to show you on my screen every now and then, and then explain it, okay? So the first expression for today is, is up. Say out loud with me all the time and later on even try to write them, okay? So you can retain as much information as possible. So, إذا ما كبرت ما بتصغر Read it again out loud with me. إذا ما كبرت oh, I don't know why my computer is typing weird stuff on its own. إذا ما كبرت إذا ما كبرت ما بتصغر Who knows what this means? Literally, do you know what it means? And the, like the implied meaning. Okay, so is a means if. Is a ma kibrit if it doesn't get big, if it didn't get big. So kibrit means it got big. Hi, Envel. Kibrit, it got big or it grew. Ma kibrit, it didn't get big or it didn't grow. Is a ma kibrit if it didn't grow. Okay, إذا ما كبرت ما بتصغر. إذا ما كبرت ما بتصغر. بتصغر is related to the adjective صغير, which means small. بتصغر means she gets small, but we have to say she because in Arabic we don't have the the pronoun it. That's why we use she or he, depending on whether the concept or the object object is feminine or masculine. So إذا ما كبرت if it that didn't get big ما بت ما بتصغر it doesn't get small what does it mean yes does it mean it needs to get worse before it gets better yes that's it very good exactly like i'm not sure what's your name natemik yes kind of andre yes that's it so اذا ما كبرت ما بتصغر it's a way to say if a problem doesn't get big it's not gonna be sorted out and maybe you won't find a solution to it for example let's say there's someone annoying you in your family uh thank you thank you suhaila let's see oh levon was with me on tiktok and now he's on instagram he's gonna join again my friend okay so uh, I'm going to be saying the same things, guys, okay? So, we were saying, So, for example, let's say you have a family member or a friend who annoys you all the time. Let's say they uh, every time you're doing something, they just 
give you like weird comments and weird remarks and whatever and hi Fado and for example you just it annoys you but you know maybe sometimes you clash and a lot of times you just let it slip away and you don't make a big deal out of it but then suddenly one day خلص, you decide you're gonna re respond and you have a big problem okay that's exactly when we say is a hi Kassan that's when we say is a makabrit maptuzrak. If it didn't get big, it doesn't get small. Yeah, and sometimes a problem has to really get big for it to be sorted or for it to dissipate. Okay? So this is first the first express hi Maria. This is the first expression for today. Is a makabrit maptuzrar. Hdarta chuf ghasan. Okay? So that's expression number one. The second expression for today is yeah, let, let me show it to you. The second expression is <laughs> Guys, be careful. It's not أخذت, it's أخذت. Okay, let me show you the difference in the uh, like accent, okay? Yalla, hear me out and say it with me. أخذت. أخذت. So the stress is on the a. أخذت. And أخذت means she took or it took. أخذت. Now, if I say أخذت, أخذت, where is the stress in the second one? أخذت. Leister. <laughs> Yalla, what does it mean? أخذت. Uh, not what does it mean, where is the stress? So the first one was on the أ. أخذت. أخذت. Okay? <laughs> the second one is أخذت. The stress is on the خ. أخذت. It means I took. In this expression, it's not أخذت إجري. I took my leg. No. It me. It's أخذت إجري. أخذت إجري. Literally, my leg took. It doesn't mean my leg took or anything like that. It kind of means my leg got used to it. Does anyone know when we use this expression? أخذت إجري. It's a way to say kind of my leg got used to going to a place. Like I got used to going to a place because it's fun and I don't even know how to stop it anymore. Something like that. Masalan, um, for example, let's say, um, I don't know, uh, my neighbors, they always have very nice food, you know, and one night I went and I ate. Okay, it seemed nice. And the ne next night, uh, uh, yes, you pass, Fadi, <laughs> and live on. So, one night I went, had dinner, had fun, okay, they invited me. Next, The next evening, maybe they invited me and I went. Maybe the third evening they didn't invite me and I still went, and the fourth evening, you know, so I kind of got used to going to a place. Sometimes people use it as a joke. To say, shoo, you got used to it. Yani, for example, let's say I'm still going to my neighbors and they want to make a joke and say, what, are you going to keep coming? They can tell me, shoo, أخذت إجريك. Your leg took. أخذت إجريك in the feminine form. And if it's a guy, they would say, أخذت إجرك. You kind of got used to it and now you don't stop coming or something like that, okay? So, أخذت إجري. It's a very nice expression to know. Like It's like a colloquial expression, okay? So the first expression for today, what was it? <laughs> so the one second let's see what andre is saying we also say for when we get used to do something job in a good way yes yes possibly that one too okay so let's let's say the first one what is the first expression for today is is a makabrit maptazgar if it doesn't get big it doesn't get small. Yani if a problem doesn't get big, it's not going to be sorted. Sometimes it's good for a problem to kind of get really big so that you can find a solution to it and um, it becomes sorted, basically. It's sorted, okay? Ghassan uh, <laughs> is saying, أخذت That works too. أخذت Like, okay, look how he wrote it, Ghassan. أخذت عقلي. عقل means brain. And mind, basically. أخذت عقلي. She took my brain or my mind, which means she took my mind away. Like she, gra she, like she took over my head. يعني you love her, basically. أخذت عقلي. 
Okay, you can also say Akhadet Elbe, she took my my heart. But in this expression, Akhadet Ijri, it's like you're literally saying my leg took, my leg got used to going to a place, okay? So yeah, let's go over the first expression. Yeah, let's stay here, Kasa. Let's go over the first uh, uh, expression. Ezamakebrit. Okay, let me turn my camera so that you can see it. By the way, I will write them in the end under the video, so don't worry. So, if a problem doesn't get big, it doesn't get small. Sometimes it's good for a problem to get big, so it becomes sorted, so it's sorted. Literally, my leg took or my leg got used to something, which means I got used to going to a place and I enjoy it and I don't stop it and I don't uh, like... Uh, kind of like shamelessly keep going sometimes, okay? The third expression for today has also the word ijr, which means leg. Ijr kirse. Ijr kirse. Okay, what does ijr kirse mean? Uh, it literally means... Uh, wait, I'm showing you my mess here. Wait, let me turn my camera. It literally means uh, the leg of a chair. So, wait, my friends are making me laugh. So, it literally means a leg of a chair. Ijr kirsi. So, when do we use this expression? For example, my mom's friend, Tonsola, she's also like my mom. Every time she sees me, she's, she wants to say, what? Why don't you have a boyfriend? What's happening? Yalla, when are you going to have a boyfriend? Okay? So, she tells me, Shu, ma fi shi wahad heik ijr kirsi? <laughs> Dekhdi. And isn't there any, like, uh, a chair leg? So you just take it, basically, as a way to say, like, you know, any leftover guy or something, at least, you know, be with someone. Ijr kirsi. So basically, when you say Ijr kirsi, kind of like uh, any person, like anyone, any, uh, it doesn't have to be good quality, you know, a leftover guy or something. Ijr kirsi. Okay. So she says to me, Ma fi shi wahad heik. There's none, no one just like that. Ijr kirsi like a leg of a chair so that I go out with him, okay? So that's Ijr Kirsi. Ma fi shi wahad heik Ijr Kirsi, tudhari ma'ho. There's no one who's like kind of a leftover at least so you go out with someone. <laughs> Man, the comments of my friends are so hilarious. Khalas, let me concentrate. Yeah, kind of like useless or something like that. Yes, all day. Okay, so that was the third expression for today. So these are fun expressions. You don't have to take them so seriously, but we use them in Lebanon, you know? So the first one is, number one, is a makabrit mabtazgar. If it doesn't get big, it doesn't get small, which means a problem sometimes has to get big for it to be sorted. The second one is akhadit ijri, which means my leg took it, which means my leg got used to it. I got used to going to a place. My leg got used to going to a place to the point I'm not even stopping now, sometimes even shamelessly. Okay. Hi, Ella. Anna, come in. The thing, the has, I will say la ijri, ru, ru. And then we have ijr kirsi, literally a leg of a chair. Hi, Yusuf, which means like, you know, anyone, any random person, uh, useless person or leftover person. Sometimes uh, people say to say like, at least you don't have an Ijr Kirsi, anyone you can go out with. Okay. So that's Ijr Kirsi. Now my friend is saying La Ijri. La Ijri, look how he wrote it. La Ijri. These are very slang ones, by the way. La Ijri means, F it. I don't care. Literally, for my leg. Basically, it's, how can I say it? Like, as important as my leg. It's something I don't care about. La ijri. For example, ma rah ijri. I won't come. Yeah, I'm, saying to, I'm saying to Ghassan, for example, I'm not coming today. Ma rah ijri. And he will say, I don't care or I don't give an F if you don't come. He can say, la ijri. For my leg. There is another version which I'm not going to teach you. You know, guys say it. Okay? So that's la ijri. For my leg, which means I don't give a F, okay? So, that's La Ijri. Now, the next expression for today, Allah, let me turn my camera and show you how we write it. And then I can write them under the video, okay? So, uh, wait, 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 let me turn it. <laughs> okay, so, the next expression is 
msiptu kbiri oh my god my friends are making me laugh msiptu kbiri and if it's a girl you say msibta kbiri so it's yalla say out loud with me msiptu kbiri msiptu kbiri msibta kbiri msiptu kbiri or msibta kbiri so how are we you can write them in the any in any way it doesn't mean uh, it doesn't make a difference thank you andre for helping okay so msibtu kbiri the word msibe on its own has a te te marbuta in the end which is silent msibe okay and it means a disaster a big problem a calamity do you say in english i'm not sure how you pronounce it okay <laughs> and msibe okay so msibe is a disaster okay So you don't pronounce the te marbuta, okay? But when I want to say his disaster, I'm not going to say msibe o. The o in the end means his, his disaster or his problem or his worries. We don't say msibe o. That would be wrong. The te, which is silent at the end of msibe, we end up pronouncing it. And it becomes msibto, msibto, two syllables, okay? So msibto, his disaster, literally, kbiri, is big. We're using a feminine adjective. Why? Because the word msibe um, is feminine. So we have to use kbire, not kbir. Because, merci le bon, because uh, whenever we have a, f- a feminine word, we have to give it a feminine adjective. Whenever we have a masculine word, we have to give it a masculine adjective. So msibe is feminine, we have to say kbire. So msibto kbire. Yalla. Say it one more time with me. Msibto kbire. When do we use ex- this expression? In two different scenarios. One, to really say that somebody has a big problem in his life. Like, really, they have a real big problem, okay? Let's say you're a Lebanese and you had, I don't know, uh, you worked all your life and you saved $200,000 in the bank. And the bank took it and you can't take it anymore. I can say, msibto kbire. Like, his problem is big, you know? But sometimes we use it as a joke to say that somebody has a, like doesn't have a big problem, but they think their problem is big in their head. The disaster is big. We use it a lot like uh, when we're talking about kids. Let's say a kid cries all the time and, you know, they make a big deal. Bye, Leo. Bye. He's saying bye-bye about the dollars. I wish these comments could stay when, when I save the video because they're hilarious. Okay, so basically... If a kid is crying all the time, or if uh, I say msibto kbiri, or msibita kbiri, uh, eh, okay, so, um, uh, let's say for example, I don't know, like, uh, like, I don't know, my niece is walking and like, I don't know, by mistake, something just like scratch her, like, like, doesn't, like, she didn't almost feel nothing, it almost didn't touch her. And she cries and she makes a big deal out of it. So we say msibita kbiri. Her problem is big. As a joke, of course, you know. Or if you eat a kid's kid's chocolate and he cries a lot or something like that. So anyone who doesn't have a big problem but they think their life is a, like a disaster and it's a, it's a very tough life, basically. We can say to them msibto kbiri. If it's a guy and if it's a girl, it's msibita Okay, yeah. So we learned so far how many expressions? We learned four expressions. Let's quickly recap. The first one is So whoever is joining now, don't worry, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave them in the comment box. You can read them later on. So is a If a problem doesn't get big enough, sometimes it's not gonna be sorted. The second one is أخذت إجري My leg took it or my leg got used to it as a way to say I got used to going to a place many times without even now wanting to stop. Okay? <laughs> like Cynthia Levon is saying. So إجر كرسي is some like random leftover guy. Sometimes people they say to you like oh, don't you have a boyfriend? At least have one إجر كرسي you know like just anyone basically as a joke. Okay, sometimes women, like uh, older generation, maybe they're not even joking, you know. Anyways, the fourth one is msibto kbiri, his 
worries or problems or disaster is big which means someone who really has problems or we can also use it like the other way around to say that really someone doesn't have any problems but they think they have big problems okay yalla whoever joined now you can continue with the rest the next expression is yalla let me tell you the next expression is harit a'sab Okay, I'll pronounce it with me. You notice how I'm writing it with a qaf, but I'm not pronoun I'm not saying harq asab. Unless you're a Druze in Lebanon, you're not gonna say harq asab. We pronounce it as a uh har asab. And look how I wrote it in English with the number two, or like with the Roman letters, and then I wrote a number two. Har asab. You have a ha r and then you have a sab. Literally it means Burning, uh, what's asab? Uh, burning um, uh, nerve, nerves. Okay, so har asab, literally burning nerves. You can use this expression whenever you're so impatient about knowing something. You're losing your patience. Sometimes there's a lot of suspense. Your 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 nerves are kind of burning. Har asab. So I can say to you, شو حر أعصاب? Like what? Is it about burning nerves? And you can't wait anymore. And you wanna, you want something to be خلاص sorted. مثلا, for example. <laughs> okay, for example, Hassan. Let's say we're watching basketball. Okay, like Lebanon was watching basc, uh, was playing basketball uh, last. Uh, month or so it's almost one month now and all of Lebanon was watching and we were on our nerves and we we were so yeah we really wanted Lebanon to win so while you're watching I'm gonna say that last time while I'm yeah let's go on into I'm talking to Afkar so while we are watching the game You know, maybe the commentator on the game will say "har asab," يعني burning nerves. يعني everyone is on their nerves, okay? But also "har asab," like my friend Levon is saying, is for example when we were when we wait for a result or something. For example, my yes, the Lebanese group, uh, the dance group who was on America's uh, Got Talent, uh, were, were they were in the uh, finals and. All of Lebanon was waiting for the results, and they won. But just before winning, you know, you know those few seconds where your nerves are burning. We say har asab, okay? But um, also sometimes we say har le asab, like yani he burned my nerves as a way, like he made me anxious, nervous, you know. Um, yeah, har asab. Or if you want to find out about something, or if you're curious about something, or you're getting impatient. The opposite of it, like Ghassan is reminding me now, is uh, you can say to someone, Rawit, say it with me out loud, Rawit, with a uh, in the end, Rawit, A'asabak. A'asab means nerves, uh, nerves, A'asabak, if you're saying it to a guy, your nerves. Rawit is an imperative verb, and it means Calm, calm your nerves down. So when somebody is really angry, really nervous, really anxious, what you can tell them, you can look at them and say, in a nice way, but sometimes you can even make them even more angry when you say, or something like that, they even boil more. Okay? If it's a girl, you don't say, you have to say, hear it. E, raw e, raw e, asabak. No, asabak with the ak in the end. That's masculine. You have to say asabik, asabik. Raw e, asabik. Calm your nerves down. Yani calm down. Okay. Raw e, asabak. Raw e, asabik. Yeah, like guys, I'm gonna continue. If you have any questions, comments, leave them in the comment box, or maybe you can leave a heart somewhere here on Instagram because it helps this video um, and it shows it to maybe more people. So if there is, I don't know if it works here as well, like a heart or whatever, just leave a heart so that Instagram shows this video to more people. Okay. So the four expressions we did so far, I'm gonna repeat them fast. Say it with me out loud. Is a makibrit ma btuzgar. If a problem doesn't get big, it doesn't get sorted. Oh, I like the hearts now on the side. 
اخذت اجري ليتلي اي ماي ليج توك ويتش مينز اي جوت يوز تو دوينغ سمثينغ اند جوينغ تو ا بليس اول ذا تايم اجر كرسي لايك ماي مامز فريند تونسولا تازمي واي دونت يو هاف ان اجر كرسي اني راندوم بوي فريند ات ليست يو وود هاف ا بوي فريند مسيبتو كبيري هيز ديزاستر از بيج ويتش مينز هي هاز بيج ووريز سمتايمز وي يوز ات تو مين اذروايز تو سي سمبدي دوزنت هاف ووريز بات دي ثينك دي هاف بيج ووريز Har asab means burning nerves whenever you you are impatient about something or really nervous about something and you you're waiting to find out the results of something you can say har asab okay yalla i'm going to go to the last one for today and uh, hi everyone who's joining now as well yalla let me turn it it's just one word it's not really an expression it's a word jakh jakh okay With a ch, jakh. Or you can say, "Pheb I like or I love." Pheb bil jakh. Pheb bil jakh. Pheb. Look how it's written. Pheb with a ch. Pheb bil jakh. Jakh. Now, what is the word jakh? It's not easy to translate it into English, but jakh is the act of really um, knowing how to take care of your looks. putting the makeup maybe you know with the all uh, يعني you're all done up your hair is very good and uh, you you wear nice clothes i don't know you put accessories you have your nails done if you're a guy you have like an iron shirt and you know it's it's not creased you smell good you have gel on your hair jakh okay and usually lebanese people really love jakh يعني um, they're not you They're not usually like uh, so like I don't know you know they will leave the house yeah just wearing anything like I do okay I'm the odd one out in Lebanon but yeah يعني, usually in Lebanon بيحبوا الجخ they like to dress up they like to look elegant they like to look good so that action is of trying to look good is called جخ okay maybe put together in English do you say put together when it comes to the look as well. Uh, Loyot. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. If it's that, then yeah, you can say put together, all done up, basically self-grooming. Yes, jakh. Okay. Yes, Eva. That could be the right word. Jakh. So pheb al jakh. I like to, and the verb of it, by the way, is jakh. Anna bjakh. Okay. Uh, for example, let's say I went out uh, today and I had a wedding. And suddenly, you know, every day I, I wear a baggy and whatever, a t-shirt. And suddenly I'm wearing like a real nice dress. And I have my hair pulled and I'm putting makeup or whatever. And then some of one of my friends will see me and they will say, Oh, jakha. You can say jakh or jakha. Jakha is the, actually the result of that jakh. Okay. Like what a nice... Mm, self grooming kind of thing okay so has jakha like like it's a way to say like nice you look nice basically okay so has jakha or so has jakh so bhab al jakh i can say lebaniye el lebaniye five syllables the lebanese el lebaniye the lebanese people el lebaniye بيحبوا اوكي ليفون اي ويل سي ات ناو ويت بيحبوا دي لايك بيحبوا الجخ دي لايك جخ لايك دي لايك بينغ اول دون اول دريست اند ان فرنش لايك وي سي تيري ا كاتر ايبانغ لايك يو نو ريلي بولد ويز فور نيدلز اور سمثينغ يعني ريلي دريست بروبرلي اوكي سو بحب الجخ اي لايك تو دريس اب اف اي ونت سي ا جاي لايكس جخ ليت مي شو يو هير بيحب بيحب هي لايكس بيحب الجخ بحب الجخ بيحب هي لايكس بيحب الجخ شي لايكس از بتحب الجخ بتحب الجخ شي لايكس ذا اكت اوف لايك جيتنج دريست لوكينج جود بينغ ريلي اليجنت يو نو سو ذاتس جخ اوكي And one more, uh, when you say, like, my friend reminded me of something here, which is really funny and really like slang and colloquial, okay? So basically, if you see someone looking good, you can say, whoa, she has jakha. Like, what a 
mm, good way of dressing up because maybe I look good on that day and I'm, you know, uh, I put makeup and all of that and I look good. But then uh, sometimes when, I, when a guy sees a girl who's really sexy and instead of sex saying, okay, she's sexy, what, how sexy she is, they say, she has she'fe. Okay, she'fe. She'fe means a piece. A piece, she'fe. I don't know, she'fet gâteau, for example, a piece of cake, okay? But if you say about someone she'fe or shu has she'fe, what a piece, it's a way to say, oh, how sexy, what a sexy girl. Or I could say to a guy shu has she'fe, like what a sexy guy, she'fe, a piece. So next time you want to say about someone that they're sexy, you can simply use the word piece, which is not piece as in peace and love, no, a piece of cake, for example, she'fe. With a uh, she has she'fe, what a piece, which means how sexy. Okay, yeah, that's it for today. Before you go, wait, 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 before you go, I want to let you know that I have Lebanese Arabic courses. I have two types of courses, live on Zoom. We meet every Monday and Wednesday. It's going to be three months. We already started September 5 and we finished December 4, but it's not too late to join. You might be able to catch up because I have the first four lessons recorded so you could watch them and then join us on Monday if you want. Uh, we are meeting every Monday and Wednesday for 1 hour and 15 minutes. And uh, the time of the class will depend on your level. So if you're not sure, just leave me a message and I can get in touch with you. And on Saturdays, even students meet, study together. So it's nice. You can meet new people, like-minded people who are studying the same thing. I also have the same courses as pre-recorded self-paced courses. These are very intensive courses, like 30-day challenge courses. But you don't have to finish them in 30 days. You can finish them in two months, three months. You have lifetime access to them, which means you have always the option of uh, watching them 10,000 times if you wish and um, yeah and they are extremely structured courses and that's the most important thing in learning a language I always say to my students it's nice to learn things here and there on social media on Instagram on TikTok on YouTube but if you don't have a structure you, there will always be a gap in your learning so if you're serious or if you're really keen about learning Arabic spoken Arabic you need these courses to guide you from one point to another to another. It's like a literally a roadmap, a clear roadmap, knowing what you're gonna learn every day. And that's very, very important. So if you want, you can leave a message on Instagram or I'm gonna leave my email address under this video. Paul did the lessons. You can tell them how nice they are, Paul, right? <laughs> okay, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna quickly, quickly, quickly go over them. So yalla, say with me. إذا ما كبرت ما بتصغر if it doesn't get big it doesn't get small a problem can't be sorted if it doesn't get big أخذت إجري I got used to going to a place and now shamelessly I keep going إجر كرسي means like some leftover person some leftover guy to be my boyfriend مصيب تكبيري his disaster is big which means they worry they have big problems but sometimes we use it to say they don't have problems and they think their problems are big thank you so much thank you Eva Thank you, and Tony as well. And Asab is burning nerves when you're impatient and when you want to know about something. Thank you, Levon. And يعني, you, you're impatiently waiting and you're on your nerves, basically. Jakh is يعني, really taking care of yourself and uh, dressing up and looking good and grooming yourself. You can say بحب الجخ or بحب الجخ. And some people gave me some ideas, some of my friends. One of my friends, Levon, he told me شو هالشقفي, which means what a piece, which means how sexy. I will write them later on. And uh, if somebody's on their nerves and they're angry or something, you can say روّق أعصابك, calm your nerves. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you really enjoyed it, Please leave a heart or something so that Instagram can show this uh, video to others. Just click on the heart and just a heart can do. Lots of love. Have a good night. Have a good Saturday and have a good weekend. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the hearts. Really appreciate it. I'm not hanging up because I'm receiving hearts. I love the hearts. More hearts, more hearts. Come on, heart, heart, heart. <laughs> you know, even a little heart can do because Instagram thinks it's a good video. Not thinks, it is a good video. And it would start showing it to other people if you just leave a little heart, okay? Thank you so much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, otherwise I'll be addicted to the hearts.
Bye guys.